So we just arrived at the Pelgolina School. So the Pelgolina School is one of the pioneer schools in Estonia for the inclusion of technology into the classrooms in those early grades. So this morning we're going to essentially see some kids from second, third grade. They're essentially doing robotics and coding. So we'll get a chance to see both. Uh, so we're pretty excited. That's why we're here. This is the stuff we really want to see. My background, uh, first I was an art teacher, yes. so my competence comes from, uh, I'm doing a lot of computer graphics, and now I'm doing my PhD in internet safety, in uh, information technology systems. Yeah, this is second graders, second graders yeah. and they have been uh, doing robotics for second uh, time yeah, this okay. uh, year, yeah. but they have started learning IT in first grade. It's kind of used to used uh, teaching with uh, older children. Usually the older ones are teaching the younger ones, like um, yeah. e-safety and these kind of things. But peer-to-peer -peer learning is very natural in robotics because one has uh, maybe quicker hands or one knows how to do the program and one has paying attention and other is like oh yeah. where I am yeah. and one likes to put the robots together and yeah. depends. Uh, today we have uh, third graders okay. and they are programming with Kodu Game Lab and this is the program that you can upload afterwards to the Microsoft Xbox. Oh you can actually play these games yes. on Xbox afterwards yes. so the, the kids would like that. Yes, uh, we sometimes we lend uh, export to schools from Microsoft and then they get tested out in real time. To test their games yes. out in real time. That's amazing. In the first lesson, they usually just uh, take the robots, they put the pieces on because there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they type a sequence. They use the book to okay. get the sequence here mm -hmm. and how to put it together to type in and then the program uh, robot starts to move. Usually the simplest program is if something is in their way, they turn, yeah. or if they clap or jump, and the robot starts turning around. Now, the second time, uh, they are started with uh, programming in computers. The issue is that uh, the programs are in English, <laughs> uh, that um, at least it's still graphical. As they game a lot uh, at yeah. home, they, um, know some words in English so they have managed yeah. they have done the program and then now they have uploaded to the robots and then now the robots is moving okay. they know what is the future life will be they know what kind of jobs they may maybe want not everybody likes robotics right. and this kind of things but some students are saying that this is the thing I want to do all my life we want them to understand that they are, they are the future in that matter and we want they to create the better f uh, future in Estonia, in that matter, that we already have Skype. Yes. But what is the next thing? In, in Estonia, we see this kind of happening. It, it's uh, this male dominated things happens probably in fourth or fifth graders. Yes. And so we have to start in early age so that, that they don't have this kind of difference. Right. Problem usually is that. Uh, Boys are like you say, you have to be better at math. But uh, in our school, we say to all the students, you have to be good at math and these kind of things. It doesn't matter uh, what gender you are. Like, personal example, I'm saying no man will like, tell me what to do. Right. And I teach my students in that way also that everybody is a whole person and you can achieve. But also, why we mix uh, the genders together in the groups? is because when uh, boys are seeing, oh, the girls are doing this way and we are doing the other way, you have to see the both ways. What do the children really like about the robotics? They know that the robot is really good. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? He's saying that he likes to build mm -hmm. and she said she likes to program. Okay, they know how to put the things together, they are not handicapped in that matter, they are not afraid of technology, and also they use a lot of their brain. <laughs> we just, we just uh, visited a, a robotics class in grade two. 
they're already programming the robots. And if, you know, the interesting part about it is it's not necessarily just about programming. A lot of it has to do with this age with collaboration, working together and problem solving. And then, uh, you know, just, just the opportunity to be creative as well that's really powerful. The teacher was not like, you know, there's some, some instruction going on in terms of this is the challenge, this is what I need you to do. But then the kids just go ahead and start doing it. And Absolutely. they have to figure it out on their own. And they got to work with other students to figure out how to do it. So there's collaboration going on. There's, there, And they're solving it. I mean, they're super fast acceleration, like we would expect students to do. And there's not, like the teacher doesn't need to know all the stuff. They just need to know what they're challenging and then how to help them a little bit. This notion that they can build games and then bring them back home on an Xbox. The school actually loans them out some Xboxes so that they can play the games that they've built, you know, at home with their family, their brothers and sisters. I mean, that's the type of challenge that really gets here. And, and I mean, the robot piece was, I'm a nerd, so I, I, that piece was just amazing. The fact that these kids could be programming uh, at that age, I mean, that, that was a second grade. At that age, and I think, you know, especially at that age, Everyone, you know, kids don't see the differences. They just see they see a challenge in front of them that it seems creative, and they want to just dive right in on it. I mean, and and that's the kind of thing. And these kids are learning it in grade, you know, grade two, three, four, all the way up through. And so by the time they're out of school, they're all at the same level. They've all learned all this kind of stuff, and you know, I mean, they're basically prepared for the most part to just jump right into the economy and start coding. They can start building stuff heck when they're in school. I mean, it's, they completely do that. And there's nothing holding them back anymore. They've got, a, if you want to call it a trade, a modern trade that they can apply to the economy that's really uh, in a, you know, in a, a focus here in Estonia around how do we build Estonia in, into this, you know, powerhouse of a technology leader. And they're doing it. They're totally doing it, and they've already done it in so many ways, so it's like it's building on what they've got. And the teacher we met today, what she was telling me, is that a lot of her, what, what she calls co-teachers, a lot of her colleagues in the school are now becoming champions themselves. So she kind of brought it in and kind of gave it the initial energy, and now there's a bunch of teachers that have seen what it's done for her, what it's done for the kids in her classes, and now they're engaging. And then it's, there's, and she was saying there was colleagues from other schools as well that were starting to hear about it, and then they're going out and getting the stuff done pulling in the technology into the school. So it's, uh, it's amazing what you can get done just with that, just letting the leaders lead.